an Indian startup that's making an electric car. The natural assumption over here would be something that is mass market and affordable. This one startup has its ambitions that are firmly grounded in India, but with them they're targeting the world. This is Praveg, and they've just unveiled their first launched offering in the form of a premium SUV named the Defy. A very cool name. And on first impressions, there's a lot that seems straight up jaw dropping here, but it's not all for the right reasons. And I'm going to be very blunt about why everything doesn't seem quite right here while trying not to be a negative Nelly. I'll be speaking as an analyst, yes, but I'll also be speaking as a car buyer and what their recent reveal plus activities in general have given to me as a first impression. On first impressions, what's jaw dropping here is just how big this SUV actually is. Measuring in with a length of nearly five meters, this thing is longer than the Range Rover Velar and it's just about a palm's length short of the full size Range Rover. Then there's the wheelbase, 30, 30 millimeters. And even so, it has a rated ground clearance of 233 millimeters. Although what we saw at their unveil didn't look all that high. Then there's the battery tech, 90 kilowatt hour lithium ion, which is again, luxury SUV territory, claiming an overall range of about 500 kilometers. So let's say about 400 in the real world. And it's also packing quite a bit of muscle underneath its skin. 620 Newton meters of torque, all wheel drive with one motor on each axle, over 400 horsepower, 4.9 seconds from zero to 100. And the tech that's on board is also quite expensive. There's ADAS, six airbags as standard, six way power adjustable front seats, automatic cabin temperature maintenance, and it's also got a sound system by Deviale. Just to give you context, Deviale produces a Bluetooth speaker that's priced between rupees three to four lakh. And you're getting all of this for an asking price of about rupees 40 lakh ex showroom, which does seem like a lot for what isn't a legacy car brand. But considering what kind of equipment you're getting here, it does seem like a lot of bang for buck. So what's the problem then? Why should anyone be skeptical about this? Well, reason one is this. The Defy would give you goosebumps with the kind of equipment and spec sheet figures that it's packing. But the actual car that we saw was just this medley of misaligned panels, crude finishes and awkward gaps. It's a very stark contrast to the car that you're going to see on their brochure and website. In all fairness, Praveg did mention that this is a pre-production prototype. And I can take that argument. But this is something that would alarm me even if I saw it on a concept car or a design study, let alone a prototype. Full disclosure, I haven't seen the car in person myself. But based on the conversations I've had with people who were there at the event, the sentiments that we felt as people watching this car in videos and photos was resonated by people on the ground as well. If anything, it felt like this press event was counterproductive because a lot of the chatter is putting Praveg and the Defy into the whole vaporware or dreamware light, like we've seen happen with 22 motors, Everve, M-Flux or Polarity. The impression I immediately got is that this was a hey we're here kind of event, because Praveg has been spoken about periodically, especially since they unveiled the Extinction two-door coupe prototype, which surfaced about two years ago. But no one in the auto space really knows what the brand is about, what the intent is, or what they stand for, even though they've been around since 2011. That's about the car. What stands out as a bigger red flag to me are the claims made that followed. This car, the Defy, is supposed to be homologated by Feb or March 2023, with deliveries and production beginning around midway through 2023. Bear in mind those Maruti, Mahindra, Tata or Hyundai test mutes that you see in their near production form. When they are being tested in that form, which in itself takes months upon months to reach, they are still anywhere from a year to a year and a half away from being introduced to the market. More on this in Powerdisk's latest video about the Mahindra Thar 5 door, I'll link that in the description. Even something as basic as the paint schemes that a car is offered with takes a Herculean amount of planning, which is why just about any car will be offered to you in white, silver, grey, maybe even red, but the most standout or brighter colour options are either restricted or not offered at all because there simply isn't enough demand. The Praveg Defy comes with 9 exterior paint shades and 5 interior trim options. The BYD Atto 3, which is BYD's 34 lakh rupee EV, doesn't offer options like this. And BYD is one of the biggest electric vehicle manufacturers, not in India, not in China, but the world. And Praveg themselves were expected to have a production ready version of the Extinction Mark 1 two door coupe by 2021, but that never happened. Maybe it was more of a test bed for them to begin with anyway. 
But that just says that there's no body of proof when it comes to their credentials as a car manufacturer, even if they may have it as an energy and data solutions provider. We're not saying that this is impossible. A lot of the timelines can be sped up with a smaller, leaner organization like Pravek versus a legacy car brand where bureaucracy gets in the way a lot of the time. We make auto content, not cars, so we aren't privy to the entire realm of what's possible. But we've spent years looking at how cars are made. We've spoken to the top executives in R&D departments of different car manufacturers. And there are certain challenges and issues that none of them can simply circumvent, which is why the process from a concept car to a production car is always one that's long drawn out. Even an economy car like the Maruti Suzuki Espresso, it went from a concept car, the concept Future S in 2018, to a production car in 2020. So would I give Praveg a chance? If they go with a more realistic production and delivery timeline, yes. But would I give them my money right now? As a car buyer, as somebody who's looking to buy something new, I spend my money on a new car? No.